Is there an explanation for the fact that some spiders and some insects eat their partner after they've had sex? <laughs> so there are a lot of theories about it, um, some more macabre than others. So um, the idea is that it's a, an extreme form of what's called a nuptial gift. So, <laughs> so in some species, and particularly in insects, the males sort of give the female some sort of food. Um, and the thinking is that it, it, it's an advantage to him to have a really healthy female because she can invest more in the eggs, right? So in those species where the female eats the male, um, it's thought to be sort of an extreme form of that <laughs> nuptial gift. And people have gone so far as to sort of hypothesize. So um, the, in these systems, in most of these systems, the male doesn't want to be eaten, right? So to make it clear. Um, and so there's a trade-off. There's a decision he has to make. So the longer he hangs around the female, the more sperm he can transfer, and the more offspring he's likely to get, but the, the chances that, she'll get eat, that he'll get eaten go up. And so he has to make sort of a decision about how long to stick around and how much that benefit really is. Um, it's not sort of my area, but I think people have actually done some work to show that um, the, the more of the male that the female eats, um, the, the more she can invest in her offspring. So it is an advantage in that sense. So he does gain from it. It is quite twisted, though, I admit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Somebody here? Sorry, I'm, I'm making you go the furthest. <laughs> <clears throat> Jumping on to a slightly different species, ours. Mm -hmm. Why is it, or, or I think we are unique as a species in indulging in far more sexual activity than virtually any other species on the planet? Why is that? <laughs> so we're not, actually. So bonobos actually have far more sex than we do. Um, <laughs> So bonobos, the, the uh, close relative of the chimpanzee, they actually have more sex than humans do, and they use it as a mechanism of conflict resolution. So there's all sorts of sex for non-reproductive reasons between females, between males, between males and females, all sorts of things going on. Um, there are theories about it. Um, so the anthropologists suggest that maybe one of the reasons humans have so much sex and that it's actually not clear when females are actually fertile um, is to maintain a pair bond between the male and the female. Um, so humans, our babies are so big, and they're so needy when they're born that it actually takes the effort of both the male and the female. So it's in the female's best interest to keep the male around and interested, and one way to do that is through sex. Um, I know, when we think of humans, it gets quite dark very quickly. <laughs> and it's all fun and games when it's turkeys, right? Um, <laughs> so that's one theory. The anthropologists have all sorts of different theories about trying to control reproductive potential as well. Um, so uh, in closely related species like the gorilla, the males try and control multiple females and the reproductive potential of those females, and that may sort of play a role in what's going on with it. So they, they're not sure when the female's reproductive, and so you mate with her to make sure that you will sire offspring that she might have for when she is fertile. There are all sorts of different reasons. It's difficult to test. We're not the best laboratory animal in the world, <laughs> but that's sort of the current thinking. You mentioned at the very beginning of your lecture about how the change in temperature of the incubated yeah. uh, eggs changed the sex. Yeah. What is the thing that the change in temperature changes that causes the change in sex? So the sex hormones, um, which in us are tied to our sex chromosomes, um, in those turtles are tied to temperature. So to induce estradiol, which makes a female, which develops, you know, causes the gonad to develop as an ovary and leads to all sorts of estrogens being secreted throughout the body, is temperature. High temperature is needed to turn it on, to initiate that sort of female pathway. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. um, it's a bit strange. It is. I mean, you say it's the temperature, that's okay, but what does the change in temperature cause to change that makes these estrogens switch on? Is it a particular gene? Yeah. Yeah, so it's the female sex-determining pathway. The whole, all those genes turn on. And it's just solely temperature-dependent. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So alligators and crocodiles are also have temperature sex um, based sex determination, and the females tend the nest, and they have essentially a thermometer on their snout. They can tell what the temperature of the nest is, and when it gets too cold, they pile more stuff on top to, to keep it warm. When it gets too hot, they pull it off. So they, they can actually fine tune things quite clearly. Cool. Thank you to everybody, and thank you yeah, very thank you. much.